Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Quarters Temporary Studio. Welcome to the show. So this episode has been a long time coming and I probably should have done it a long time ago, but you know what? Here we are. So on this episode today, I'm going to teach you the best way to build on a budget, or at least I should say my opinion or the way that I go about building on a budget. And yeah, I mean, I've built... I don't know, 300 plus budget decks, a, a ton. I'd have to go look at some point. Maybe I'll, I'll look right now, one sec. And typing, and yep, okay, looks like EDH budget deck techs uh, is my playlist, and uh, that one has about 331 videos on it. So yeah, at the very least, that many budget decks. So I've got some experience when it comes to it, and I'd love to impart some knowledge on you. If you are looking to build budget as well, my favorite way to play. Regardless, let's jump into it. So first up, if you are looking to build budget for one reason or another, if you're looking to save some money or if you're just looking to challenge yourself, yeah, what I would do first is determine what your budget is. Now, it sounds like a very simple thing, and there's a couple of different ways to go about this, and I've actually used both throughout my Magic career. First up, I did start with an initial budget per deck, and as you can see in my earliest episodes, yeah, in many of my episodes, $25 was my initial budget for those decks. And essentially, I said, you know what? I don't care what the individual cost of a card is. If it is good in this deck and it is, you know, reasonable to put in there, I will put it in there as long as I can make room for it in that budget of $25. So it didn't matter, you know, what exactly the price of those cards were. I mean, I think at one point I did fit in like an $8 card or something into a deck because, well, it was just so perfect. It was like the golden pig of the deck. And I was like, I can make room for it in these other ways. So yeah, maybe that's one way that you go about it. Maybe it's like, you know what? $25, that's my limit, or whatever amount that you want it to be. I've done decks as low as, you know, $1. I think uh, my, my lowest deck, I think, was like $0.84 cents or like $0.68 cents or something like that. Something ridiculous. Regardless, yeah, that is one way to go about it, selecting the price tag of your deck up front. The other way to go about it, though, is a per-card basis. And a lot of what I've done lately has been that, though I do kind of go back and forth sometimes depending on what I want to do. But basically, you know, I mean, for many of my recent episodes, I've said, you know what, every single card in this deck is less than $1. I mean, outside of the commander sometimes too, but and you can make that kind of a restriction for you as well. But yeah, basically just selecting a price per card is a great way to just self-limit your spending. Because, I mean, okay, technically, if you literally built, you know, a, you know, every single card in the deck is $100, you could get all the way up to $100 if you literally spent $1 on every single card. But, yeah, I mean, you're probably not going to get that, you know, way, especially if you're using, you know, basic lands and whatnot. But, yeah, we'll talk about that here in a bit. Regardless, just self-limiting the cost of every single card in your deck is a great way to just start things off. And that's where Scryfall searching really comes in handy. And that's something that I do essentially on many of my Scryfall searches these days, is I'm not even looking for cards that are outside of my budget restriction. And Scryfall is great about this, that you know, if one version of the card is underneath the restriction, it will show you that it shows up in the results. So if all the other versions don't show up, this one will. But yeah, I, I just basically just add USD less than $1 on every single one of my searches. And then I'm not even tempted to be like, well, you know what? I, I could just splurge for this little card over here. But yeah, it, it's just self-limiting. It's a nice way to kind of get in that mindset. Of, okay, what are budget cards these days? What cards can I make use of? What cards can I really make work within my restrictions? And just personally, I really do enjoy building budget, and I love the challenge of it. I love, you know, playing against decks that are, you know, not budget and being like, yeah, I can still compete, you know, with all these different cards. And you can, you can find cards that are unique and off the wall that way that maybe others aren't looking for because, you know, maybe players out there, you know, depend a little too much potentially on those, you know, quote-unquote staples that might be a little more expensive. But that's a different discussion. Regardless, let's move on to the next point. And my next one is actually quite simple. Um, 
buy basic lands in bulk. Yeah, this is something that I have done for years now, and you don't really have to buy basic lands all that often then if you are buying them in bulk. You're always going to get them cheaper if you're buying them in bulk than if you're buying them individually when you're just building decks. And it's also just nice to have extra lands lying around uh, just in case, you know, like let's say you know you're building your decks again specifically for what they are, uh, but then you, you know, you make some adjustments and then you need to change the amount of basics in your deck or a certain kind of basic in your deck, and you don't have those basics just lying around. Uh, yeah, you can utilize, you know, your giant stack of basic lands, essentially, that you can buy from, you know, a variety of places. I mean, here's one that listing that I just found. $30 for, you know, 500 basic lands. That's what, like, six cents per land, which is quite cheap and quite affordable. Again, if you are going to build a decent amount of decks, uh, yeah, you can utilize those lands to their fullest. And also, yeah, I mean, I think actually I used to get this a little bit cheaper, even the price has increased recently, and maybe the price will go down again. But yeah, I mean, six cents per land is not bad at all. Instead of just, you know, adding, you know, lands to your cart and then paying even 10 cents for a land or 12 cents for a land, that's twice as much as you'd pay just by buying them in bulk. So yeah, buying a lot of basic lands ahead of time can be a great way to save money in the long run. And kind of along those lines, number three point is consider picking up multiple copies of cards that you will use for many future decks. For example, Evolving Wilds, Timberwolfing Expanse, Command Tower, those kinds of cards you might be using in a lot of decks. And if you can you know, maybe find them pretty cheap at the time, there are certain shops that are going to be selling multiple copies of them for pretty cheap. Take advantage of that. I, I mean, or after, you know, a recent reprint, especially, you know, like Wayfarer's Bobble just getting reprinted or whatnot. Pick a couple up. If you know you're going to be building more and more decks with that card, I mean, don't go crazy. Don't pick up like 100 copies of things. But yeah, not too long ago, I mean, I picked up, you know, 10 copies of Evolving Wilds and Hermoric Sands and Command Tower because I knew that I'd be building decks that would have them and I could make use of them. So yeah, if you find a good deal on a certain card in a shop that you're purchasing from is going to have multiple copies of those, make sure you're picking those up. And, and I do say shop, I'm talking about TCG Player. Which is where I pick up my cards, and yeah, I'll talk about another good tip for TCG player coming up here in a bit. Regardless, next up, number four. Actually, picking up multiple decks at the same time when possible is a way to do it as well. Now, I'm not saying, you know, just throw together a hodgepodge deck just to be like, oh, I'm trying to save money in the long run. If you're not going to play that deck, you're not saving money. But sure, if you're in the middle of maybe building, you know, two or three decks, maybe wait until you're finished with all of them to pick all of them up at the same time. So again, you can take advantage of buying from multiple shops that have the same cards, essentially. Yeah, I mean, there's a great way to essentially just kind of Put everything into the same order so you're saving more in the long run again versus buying, you know, things kind of hodgepodge here and there. At the very least, wait until you kind of finish the actual full deck. Uh, unless, uh, I would say, like, let's say a brand new commander comes out and you know certain cards are probably going to spike because of it. I mean, like, maybe that brand new mirror commander that came out. Yeah, some of the mirror are probably going to go up in price. So if you just want to make a, you know, a quick run to get a couple of those mirror cards... Great, but for the most part, you know, if you know a new set is not coming out anytime in the near future and there's no spoilers or whatnot, yeah, try your best to, you know, just maybe save up and, you know, pick multiple decks up at the exact same time when you can. Number five, and this is a big one, and a massive thank you to Eddie for really teaching me about this. And yeah, Eddie still teaches me about this because Eddie is the expert when it comes to this kind of stuff. But yeah, make sure you improve your scryfall searching ability if you can. Their syntax guide is amazing. It is a huge thing when it comes to searching for cards. And yeah, it really helps. I mean, at the very least, again, just adding, you know, USD, you know, less than one. Or, you know, utilizing their advanced search capabilities to, you know, actually just do that and, you know, click it. Essentially, there's easy ways to do this, too. But, yeah, if you can learn their syntax guide, it can just be easier and quicker for your searching. And you're also going to be better about, you know, being able to go through and find the exact cards that you need. I mean, if you're building a devotion deck, did you know you could actually just search, you know, based on devotion? You can then find, you know, maybe some off-the-wall cards that, again, are pretty budget-friendly because not many people are running them. So, yeah, being able to improve your search ability on Scryfall is absolutely massive. Thank you. 
another thing, if you like using EDH Rec, and, and actually I should say the order that I go about building decks is I typically utilize Scryfall first, you know, get most of it built, and then I kind of go to see EDH Rec to see, you know, maybe if I miss some things. Regardless, if you are using EDH Rec, you can select a budget option on there. Not sure if you knew that, but basically underneath the commander, under navigation, there's, you know, by theme, and there's also by budget, and, you know, are just generally selected at all already when you get into the platform, but also then, if you, you know, want to go for an expensive deck, cool, click expensive. If you, again, want to build budget like I do, though, you can just click cheap, and then it will only show you cards that are, well, on the cheaper end of things. For the most part, there are certain times when, like, new cards come out in the new section, where it's like, hey, this card shows up in this percentage, it's like, oh, gosh, that card's $16, but yeah, for the most part, it's a really good tool as well to just say okay what budget cards might I be missing from my build next up though number seven do not buy tokens or okay maybe I should more specifically say do not buy expensive tokens now you can do whatever you want obviously if you want to go buy tokens great go for it but, uh, I mean, uh, I'll just give you an example of kind of when I, you know, first started playing Commander, and I really felt like I needed a token for this, and I didn't do what I do these days. But yeah, I believe it was Illusion Token from Loku, the Clouded Mirror, and uh, yeah, I got two of them, I think, at the time as well. But uh, yeah, they were reprinted, I think, in Commander Legends, but before that, they were just in Modern Masters, and it was like a 4 or $5 token, which... It's kind of ridiculous when you're buying a card that uh, is worth more than like any other card in your deck. At least for me. Again, I was building, you know, decks that have, you know, cards that are $1 or less essentially. And, and yeah, uh, this was a $4 card. So yeah, it was quite ridiculous, especially when you buy two. So yeah, do not buy tokens. Uh, if, I mean, if you want to, you're welcome to obviously. But when you want to save more money, a better example might be going to, you know, make your own tokens like I do. I mean, I, I talked about, you know, this, the shrine token on an episode essentially and how it's ridiculously priced because wizards made a bit of a boo-boo when they were printing it and they didn't really print it like all that much. It only showed up in like specific things and it was supposed to show up a lot more often. And like right now, I think it's a $10 token. It used to be like a $20 token. But yeah, I did an entire episode. I'm like, hey, um, just draw your own tokens instead. You can buy like really, really cheap, you know, like poker sized cards essentially that you can just draw with a Sharpie. And there are plenty of different resources, you know, online. You can just type in like, you know, shrine, art, draw, you know, or, or just uh, essentially you can find easy ways to just make easy little sketches of different things essentially for your tokens. Or you can just buy erasable poker size cards as well uh, and buy, you know, just erasable markers too. It's very simple, very easy. Again, eliminating the reason to actually, you know, buy tokens as like initial cost, especially when it comes to those ridiculously expensive ones. I mean, yeah, for the, you know, the Shrines deck, I mean, the token is one of the most expensive things for that deck, which is ridiculous. So yeah, I'd recommend not spending your money on those kinds of tokens. Number eight, make sure that when you're buying your deck, and actually I'm specifically talking about TCG Player here because they've got a great optimized tool. Yeah, make sure you optimize your cart. And there's a great little button right there that says optimize your cart. So yeah, just click on that. And then when you do, make sure you're going through and actually optimizing it in the way that you want. So yeah, if you've got some advanced rules, which you know are, hey, for me, moderately played or better is what's usually selected to start. But yeah, basically just going down and selecting any condition, which includes, you know, heavily played as well as damage cards, which of course, again, need a home too. And they work in the exact same way as all the other cards. And you're going to be putting it in a sleeve anyways. So there's really no difference. Yeah, just select any condition if you're completely fine with going essentially on the most budget plan. Uh, and then also, yeah, you don't, you know, also select, you know, keep current printings is another thing. I think that is usually selected. You can take that off as well, then optimize and it will do all the work for you to get you the best price. Number nine, trading is also a great way to maximize your budget experience. So again, some of the old decks that I built, uh, you know, have basically gone up in price quite a bit. And maybe if you stop playing those decks, there are certain cards in them that are decently valuable these days, just because over time, some of them maybe haven't gotten reprinted and have gone up quite a bit in price. Then yeah, maybe if you're not gonna play that deck anymore, consider trading away, you know, a more expensive card 
to, you know, maybe build a future deck. Maybe there are, you know, certain cards that your friends have or those your OGS have that you can utilize, you know, those cards for to actually build that deck. Or if you do want to reach for a card, if you actually want to, you know, say, okay, again, I'm building this deck budget, but there is one card again, you know, like I mentioned earlier, that $8 card or whatever, that'd be perfect for this deck that would be, would be that golden pig of the deck. And you're like, you know what? I, I don't want to spend the money on it, but I am, I know one of my friends has it and I'm just going to trade them for it. I'm going to utilize, you know, some of the old cards that I have from some of my older decks that I'm not using anymore to actually trade to get that card to add to this deck. So yeah, there are definitely ways to go budget with trading as well. And finally, number 10. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of content out there on budget builds, including obviously this channel. So yeah, make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for more exciting budget builds. Make sure you go through, you know, there's, I mean, again, 330 or so budget decks that I've already built on the channel. You know, some of those obviously, you know, from way back when might have gone up in price a little bit depending on the cards. But yeah, certain cards have gotten le less expensive, you know, since I started. Or I guess Wayfarer's Bobble started, you know, 12 cents that went up to like, three dollars or four dollars or whatever it was now back down to a much more reasonable amount but yeah it prices ebb and flow but yeah make sure you check out you know more budget builds not just from my channel but from others as well so again if you are looking to build budget for one reason or another if you just you know want the challenge if you're looking to save some money if you're looking to you know maybe try something different than your friends and you all just play you know kind of like a budget league like i've done with my friends great i hope this episode helped you and yeah if you've got any other recommendations for others you know on how you go about building budget make sure you comment below and you know let everyone know and with that today's episode is coming to a close so yeah let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and of course as always thanks again and have a good one this show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.